Today, I want to talk about the five movements and how exactly they work within the show, as well as the metaphysics of the show as a whole, as this line of thinking very much supports my theory that the Haptives are actually just Prairie's delusions in season one, but more on that later. In the first season of the OA, each of the Haptives has a near-death experience that helps them uncover one of these supposed movements that will help them escape their prison. The five movements, when performed by five people in perfect harmony, are supposed to open an invisible river, through which you can jump into another reality. At the beginning of Season 2, we were led to believe that this worked, and that the OA had jumped to a parallel reality where she never had her near-death experience. In addition to interdimensional travel, they can supposedly heal and bring back the dead, and different combinations would likely have been used to do other crazy things, such as time travel. While it at first seemed like interdimensional travel would allow the characters to physically go to another dimension, it was only the consciousness or souls that travels, leaving their body behind. Many of the characters jump after being fatally wounded, such as Oe, so they leave behind a dead body as they jump, but others can return to the unconscious bodies that they left behind. When in a new body, you might suppress the host consciousness, or it may suppress you, though integrating and allowing both of you to become more or less the same person is considered the wisest option if you don't end up suppressed in the memories of your host consciousness. When a character jumps out of the body that they invaded, they appear to leave behind the original host of the body, such as we see with Elodie in Season 2. What is really interesting is that because she integrated, the Elodie she left behind also retains the memories and experiences of the integrated Elodie who jumped into her body, explaining why she continues on her mission to help Oe and Hap in Dimension 2 after she jumped using the robots. Now, this is how the movements were presented as far as the characters understand it, but the implications of the show are a bit more big than that. The series as a whole is about the human ability to turn fantasy into reality, and that's important because because in addition to the movements, I believe that the OA's entire story in the bunker is something of a fantasy that she is turning into reality. For the movements themselves, the first time the Crestwood Five actually performed them in the cafeteria, OA didn't even jump. She was dying from a bullet wound, but managed to live long enough to get into an ambulance and start driving away after the movements were long over. Later, the movements are shown to be more instantaneous in their effects, such as we see with Steve jumping at the end of Season 2. According to Evelyn, after Oe and Homer healed her, getting to the other side is a matter of will. It takes someone with a great strength, and this process is something the characters had already done not with the movements, but from near-death experiences. The movements are a sort of simulated death that allows your consciousness to travel the same way it does when you die. So regardless of if the Crestwood Five had done the movements, the OA could have had the will to swim to Dimension 2, to will herself to Homer, where she believed he was. The fact that they had done the movements is what made OA believe she could get to the other side though, as she believed that the movements worked. Her death being a coincidence ended up convincing the Crestwood Five that the movements worked too, and thus the second time they performed them at the end of Season 2, it doesn't just work for them, letting Steve and perhaps BBA jump, it seems to even be what fuels the OA's jump in Dimension 2. Elodie explained that there are many tools to travel, but the most important thing is fuel. Hat believes that willing himself to the dimension he wants is the fuel he needs, and thus the robots would open the invisible river. However, when BBA tells them to do the movements, it's because OA needs their help that moment, not from the long-term plan of BBA getting into Dimension 2, but to open the invisible river for her, because if the robots failed to work, Homer would have died in Dimension 2. It was only because of the Crestwood Five doing those movements in Dimension 1 that she, and presumably Homer with her, were able to jump to Dimension 3. With that in mind, it becomes easier to see how not just the movements were something OA turned from fantasy into reality, but the haptives as well. Season 1's story was all about whether or not Oe made her story up, and Season 2 led us to believe that it was real by having all of those characters exist in this second dimension. However, the quote Kareem found at the end of the house on Knob Hill indicated that we would go back to Season 1 and see the truth of it. We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. At this point, we thought there were infinite dimensions, of course, all just being branching timelines, but then we jump to Dimension 3 and realize that Dimensions 1 and 2 are just fictional dimensions created by Britt Marling in Dimension 3, the real-life actress who plays the OA and who co-created the show. 
This Brit Marling would have appeared to have accidentally brought her characters to life and have them jump into the bodies of the people who inspired them, including the OA into her own body. The show appears to be a loop and a palindrome, as I have discussed many times before, something evidenced by the title itself, the O representing the loop that she is trapped in, and the A representing how the second half of the story will mirror the first half, with a breaking out point in the middle. This middle point would be the middle of season 3, the very middle of the series, where OA seems to realize that she is just a creation of Brit Marlings, and that she must continue her mission to prevent this evil she brought to life. Hap. This would mean going down to Dimension 4 with him, which would parallel Dimension 2 in some ways, as the series is a palindrome, as discussed, before eventually returning to Dimension 1, into the past, to start the story over again. Back in Dimension 1, we would see the story the OA told happening in real time, and like with the movements, we would see how the Haptives and her imprisonment was something of a delusion in her head, and the entire series is just about how she has to maintain a constant loop of craziness just to keep her friends existing in some form, trying to find a way that they can exist together. I've discussed this theory at length in my previous videos, and I'll put a link in the pinned comment down below to my playlist if you want to understand the theory in depth. But for this video, the key details can be seen just while watching season 1 of the show. Prairie talks about how she heard voices as a child, and because she was blind, she thought they were real people, friends of her father's. I believe she met the real Hap, who is a good person, and as we saw in the story, he encouraged her to stop taking her medication before she asked him to take her in and study her. I do not believe that the real Hap had prisoners or performed near-death experience experiments on people, but instead would perform completely normal tests and study their lives in psychology, as he indicates to Prairie in their first conversation. When Owe is led to the basement, it is not until she is alone that she starts hearing voices again, and they would have to construct a story that explains why she can hear them, but can't reach them. They must all be prisoners. Over the course of the first night there, she would construct this narrative, but not speak it directly to Hap. Hap would just see the woman he invited starting to experience withdrawal from her medication, as well as returning delusions that the medications had kept at bay. He would try to be encouraging to her, not knowing that she believes herself to be trapped in the basement, not realizing that the reason she's allowed around the house and not so much outside is that Hap is just too busy studying and working to appropriately take care of Owe and help her outside, as she couldn't go walking alone as a blind woman. Her psychosis would get worse, and Hap would continue to study her, eventually realizing that she misinterpreted him wanting to study her as her being his prisoner. These Haptives became a ways way to cope with not just the delusion of imprisonment, but the true feeling of it she had even in a nice man's home. The voices in her head would be inspired in part by the patients Hap had described, the video OA found of the real Homer online, and the personalities of the Crestwood Five. After Britt Marling seemed to prove that she could create imaginary people in her TV show and have them jump into the bodies of people who inspired them in Dimension 3, we can now understand that the Haptives were just the alternate personalities of OA herself in Dimension 1, and that they were able to jump into the bodies that inspired OA's delusions in Dimension 2. Among the Haptives, I also believe the evil version of Hap is something Oe manifested as well, creating him along with the Haptives. According to Elodie, he has no shadow, has no will to exist. Oe's will becomes tied to the existence of her friends, who only exist in her head as Hap's prisoners. It is the thing she has to believe in in order to keep her friends real, caught in the cycle and constantly trying to break free so they can live peacefully. But for more details on that theory, please check out the playlist in the pinned comment down below, as there's a lot of evidence that goes into it. This is my final OA theory video planned, but if you do have a topic you'd like me to cover, whether for the OA or one of its inspirations, let me know in the comments down below. And if not, it was nice deconstructing this show and talking about it with all of you. Thank you very much to all the people who helped put the pieces together, especially everyone over on the OA subreddit that has been the most important place for helping me solve all of this. See you guys next time.